Hey everybody, Chris Baker here from LuckyGunner.com. We're doing a new thing. How about a little Q&A? Today's question comes via email from Cameron. Dear LG team, what would you guys think about doing an in-depth article on how to stylishly dress around a concealed firearm? There's lots of resources out there on holsters and belts, but a lot less on how to dress around your weapon and not look like a knob. Many reputable firearms writers and trainers are perfectly content to rock the tall white socks, cargo pants, oversized polo, fishing vest look, but I would honestly prefer to dress more like Chris Baker if someone could just give me some advice on how. Well, Cameron, I am flattered that you would think of me for this topic. I am sure a lot of people, my wife included, would find it amusing that anyone would look to me for advice on how to dress stylishly. I wanna suggest a couple of resources that address this topic better than I probably can. The first is The Suited Shootist. He has got a YouTube channel as well as a blog. Both have tons of great information on a variety of self-defense topics, including how to dress well while carrying a gun. The other resource is Filster Holsters. They just recently came out with a guide that you can find on their website called The Basics of Concealment Mechanics. It is by far the absolute best explanation I've ever seen for how guns and holsters interact with our bodies and clothes and how that interaction affects comfort and concealment. If you wanna make your carry setup work with the clothes that you already have, understanding those concealment mechanics is a must. Now, having said all that, Cameron, if you still really wanna know how to dress like Chris Baker, it's pretty simple. You're gonna be following in the footsteps of some of our most celebrated fashion icons like Steve Jobs, Jay Leno, and Han Solo. These are all highly successful men who wear basically the same thing every day. Now, I do personally like a little variety, so I have essentially two outfits, dark gray t-shirt with green pants or dark gray pants with a blue t-shirt. Then you get three or four jackets and hoodies that you like, a few pairs of black sneakers with white soles, and boom, you're done. There's 90% of your wardrobe. Okay, so, now you look fantastic with minimal effort, but what does this have to do with carrying a concealed handgun? Well, not a whole lot, and that's kind of the point of what I want to discuss today. Cameron, this was not the actual question that you asked, but your email did mention the phrase dressing around the gun. A couple of years ago, I just decided I was no longer interested in doing that. I talked about this briefly in my review of the Filster Enigma from last month. If you're not familiar with the concept, dressing around the gun is just where you choose your wardrobe based on what most effectively conceals your pistol. Now, I do still take concealed carry into account to some degree when I'm deciding what to wear. I am just a lot more likely these days to make the gun and the carry method fit the way I wanna dress rather than the other way around. Now, fortunately, with advances in holsters and other carry gear, and with all the different types of firearms we have available now, I often don't have to choose between carrying the gun I want or wearing the clothes I want. A lot of the time, I can do both. But if I do run into a conflict, I'm gonna lean towards wearing what I want. To some people, that would be considered a dangerous compromise. I guess that depends on your perspective. I don't really see it that way. Having the skills and the tools to take care of yourself is supposed to be liberating, not limiting. I, I don't see this approach as a compromise to my safety. If anything, there is a limit to the compromises I'm willing to make to my lifestyle in order to accommodate carrying a gun. Now, your personal risk assessment may lead you down a completely different path, and that's Totally legitimate. If there is anything we have learned over the last year, it is that even in matters of life and death, we're never gonna all agree on what constitutes a serious risk and how to best mitigate those risks. What I want to caution against is falling victim to the tactical hive mind that tries to dictate what the minimum standard should be if you take your personal safety seriously. That standard is continuously changing, but it usually starts with some assertion that you should not even bother carrying a gun unless it meets some minimum threshold for size, caliber, and ammo capacity. And then you're as good as dead if you don't also carry a spare magazine for that gun. 
Then you have to put a full-size weapon-mounted light on that pistol, or all the kids on Instagram are gonna laugh at you. And then you're gonna need a fixed blade knife and a tourniquet, whether or not you have any idea of how or when to actually use those things. Then to carry all that stuff, you're gonna need a two inch wide bat belt. And to bring this all back around to the clothing issue, to conceal all that stuff, you're gonna need a whole new wardrobe. And that is where we get the tactical hobo look that Cameron mentioned in his email with the oversized polo and cargo pants. And if you really have no shame, the tactical fishing vest. If you're under 50, the tactical hobo probably looks more like an untucked flannel shirt, jeans, and a pair of Merrill hiking boots. Now, if you want to carry all of that stuff, that's perfectly fine individually and in the right context. None of those things are inherently bad. And depending on where you live and what you do for a living and your age and other demographics, dressing like a tactical hobo might actually not look out of place at all. I just don't think anyone should feel obligated to dress a certain way or to carry certain gear solely because that's just what you do if you're serious about self-defense. You can be serious about self-defense and still have other priorities that supersede the optimization of your concealed carry setup. I know some of you have uh, fully immersed yourselves in the uh, armed self-defense as a hobby thing, and uh, this is really difficult to accept because what kind of dandy prioritizes something like fashion over their own personal safety and that of their loved ones? And I hate to say the F word because I know it makes a lot of you uncomfortable, but I've got to say it again. Fashion matters. And I'm not talking about following the latest trends or uh, wearing expensive clothes. Uh, half my wardrobe consists of $7 t-shirts. I'm just talking about having the self-awareness to understand in what ways your dress and overall appearance impacts the way you are perceived by people around you. I could talk about the benefits of being a quote unquote gray man and blending into your surroundings and all that stuff. Uh, you don't want bad guys to think you're the guy with a gun that has some strategic advantages. You don't want to draw any attention to your gun if you're in a non-permissive environment. I am sure most of you have heard all of these arguments before. But what about some of the other real life stuff? If you wear clothes that don't fit well or that look dated or out of place, that can draw unwanted attention or prevent you from being taken seriously. You could miss out on things like uh, jobs or career advancement. You could be limiting your romantic prospects. In some cases, a sloppy appearance could even make you look more likely to be a compliant victim in the eyes of a predatory violent criminal. The late Dr. William April talked a lot about this kind of thing. Uh, I will leave a link to a collection of his lectures and podcasts in the description. Um, he had some of the best information available on victim deselection. Violent criminals make subconscious decisions about who to victimize based on a number of factors like the way people carry themselves, their mannerisms, the way they walk, their level of physical fitness, and their overall appearance, including the way they dress. Now, I'm not saying that you're gonna get mugged if you wear cargo pants. I'm saying that if you have uh, an arsenal on your belt, but you dress in a way that suggests a lack of self-respect and self-confidence, that might not be a net positive. There's a whole lot more to self-defense than carrying a gun, and there's a whole lot more to life than self-defense. You carry to live, you don't live to carry. So before you start dressing around the gun, just ask yourself a couple of things. First, do you really have to make that trade-off? And second, to paraphrase Dr. April, what kind of signals are you sending out to the world about yourself with your appearance? If you've got a question you want me to address in a future video, just leave that in the comments below, or you can send an email to askcb at luckygunner.com. I might not be able to read every question, but I promise I can read.